But the issue here in this Proposition 161 is also uh, there is this dimension of quality of life, quote unquote, which is the basis of this whole argument that towards the end of life, uh, what but really constitutes qual life, or what is quality of life? Is a, I mean, uh, is a relative thing. Quality of life to whom? According to whom? And if we cannot go on be, uh, this thing, because somebody might say, a poor person is his quality of life is not good, so let's also kill him. Or somebody, some maybe a person in a very difficult situation, when he's going through economic problem, you say, my quality, there is no quality of life in me. Kill me. I want to die. That's this is means it's okay to kill the people in, in Africa and Somalia now who are suffering from from all this uh, no, no, but the, uh, starvation. The, but the proposition would require, uh, first of all, the person's own signed uh, declaration uh, in front of two witnesses that he would choose at that point in life where he meets with a terminally ill terminal illness. Uh, that it should be terminated by... The, the question of terminal illness, I think, is a misnomer, because in my life, maybe in your life as a physician as well, I do remember a patient uh, whom we thought had an inoperable carcinoma, who was moribund, and we sent her home to die, because the, the family preferred that she would die at home, not in hospital. Ten years later, I am in the supermarket and the hand grabs my shoulder, and there she was. Remember me? And, and this happens, and, and physicians know it, that sometimes... Yeah, that but, these are, but these are exceptions, Dr. Hathout. I mean, uh, an exception is always there. I, I understand what you're saying, and I understand uh, that uh, the... When the exceptions become the subject of killing or leaving to take a natural course, I think they become uh, uh, the, the base setters of the whole issue. But this is not the issue of debate as far as Islam is concerned. Yes. The life is in the hand of God. God, the job of the physician is to help in curing the life. Whosoever makes one person live as if he has made the whole humanity live. And whosoever kills somebody as if he has killed the whole humanity. So killing is not allowed. Yes. I think uh, other religions also, I think, sh uh, possibly share our, 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 our I'm, view. I'm sure they do. And I would like to make a point that this is a sliding slope because once allowed, it will extend to include other categories than the terminally ill like the retarded, the defected, etc. And then already a Monsieur Attai in France in 1981 wrote about the duty to die. When the human machine has outlived its productive lifespan, it should be disposed of. And the fault is to consider human life as a machine. I think, uh, you know, you have raised up a, a very valid point that once you open the Pandora's box, uh, the, the controls are not there. And indeed, that is uh, happening in Netherlands where it all started, where uh, now, according to the government sources themselves, that those who uh, initially, uh, uh, initially this, this process was only offered to those who consented, but now it is also uh, being offered to those who, have, who are unable to consent or the, not The concept it. of a life not worthy living started in Nazi Germany, really, and was tried mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and was um, advocated by uh, top quality scientists and, and medical professionals. Of course. The and medicines. then very subtly it went into what it came out to be, and I don't think it, be, it would be wise. This is a very materialistic approach to life. This yes. is a very materialistic thing to, to, first of all, to think that because of the medical advancement, to think that we have control over life, and this was, the, this was asserted. Well, I think now it's more we have control over life. More and now more. Being said, now we have control over death, too. So I mean, this, uh, both of these things are wrong. Because nobody has control over life, nobody has control over death. It is only God who determines that. Yes, but I think uh, you know it's 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 good to to hear that from the from the religious uh, this thing. But from a scientific perspective, 
uh, it is becoming very obvious that biotechnology is having a major impact on on uh, on different issues concerned with life on both extremes both ends technology uh, should be used uh, according to the moral principles otherwise technology will become demonic yes it so will I become satanic it will it will it will lead to further destruction of the humanity it's not going to be beneficial for people no. it will be really destructive for them yes I I, I I think we should respect science and technology but not worship them yes because there is some other being to be worshipped really and technology uses with the human being at the biological level it is like the old horse and you give it the mercy shot but human life is a value human beings are different from the rest of the biological life uh, human life is very special we have gone beyond biology to humanity well let's hope that uh a, a, the moral dimension is kept in mind when uh, voters go to the poll. I, I suspect that, uh, or I expect that from the Islamic perspective, everyone should vote now. Yes. yes. And I believe from absolutely. the human perspective. Absolutely. And human well. perspective, yes. Christian perspective, Jewish perspective, every perspective. This is one of the situations where the Muslim in me and the scientist in me are not in conflict. Well, thank you, gentlemen. It was nice having you both. Proposition 161 requires two witnesses to the signing of an advanced, revocable directive indicating that a person wants to have his or her life ended with the aid of a physician in a painless, humane, and dignified manner if terminally ill or if immediate death is requested at least twice. The proposition also specifies who can and cannot be a witness to the death directive. Well, the Catholic Church is against euthanasia and has been since the beginning of the founding of the church because of the commandments, the commandments of God, thou shalt not kill. And that's the basic underlying reason that the church is against euthanasia. Um, the, the other part of that belief is the, the Catholics believe that God is in charge of our life. God created us. We are gods. We, are, we belong to God. And he alone has the right to take us. He alone. In addition to the being against euthanasia per se, the Catholic Church is very concerned about this particular initiative, 161, because it is so poorly done. Um, it, is, it is written with so few safeguards that it would allow for tremendous abuse. And I think that people don't realize that. They think it just has to do with withdrawing life support or whatever, something that doesn't even have anything to do with. The ACLU of Southern California supports Proposition 161 because we think that people have a right, if they are terminally ill, to decide when to say stop. Uh, we think that people have a right to decide that if they're terminally ill, an option they wish to elect is not to live anymore. This proposition permits that, but it also establishes the kinds of strong safeguards that are necessary to make sure that people are not murdered. There are different perspectives on this issue and a variety of issues among religious organizations, and we are not a religious organization. We're a civil rights organization. And we think that the diverse uh, society of the United States uh, is entitled to some fundamental civil rights protections, of which the right to cease living is one. I've been working with dying patients for several years as medical director of the hospice at St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank. We feel it is our role to provide comfort in the days toward the end of life that would make euthanasia unnecessary and unwanted. We try to evaluate the patient and their pain, whether the pain be physical, emotional, spiritual, or social. We try to take each factor and evaluate those that we can help. And we feel that by helping people and their families toward the end of life, we can make these last precious days more significant to them and their family. To prematurely end somebody's life not only has certain religious connotations that are negative, but it also deprives people of the opportunity of showing their love 
through demonstration of care and compassion. I regard it as a form of physician-assisted suicide, and suicide in the eyes of a psychiatrist always makes uh, uh, one's hair bristle and one's ears go up. Um, suicide is the enemy to a psychiatrist. So I think most psychiatrists would uh, certainly think uh, twice about supporting any euthanasia uh, provisions. I believe that uh, if uh, euthanasia is permitted, particularly um, when it's permitted under the circumstances of a law like, uh, of a proposed law like Proposition 161, it will leave, uh, it will not only lead to the tragedy of potentially treatable people dying, but it will lead to lots of recriminations and uh, much um, guilt and much anger in the survivors. Um, I think we will deprive survivor, survivors the chance to work through the death um, of their relatives uh, and to assist them and comfort them in their final hours. Islam means submission to the will of God. It is only God who gives life and only he who has the right to take it. Let us remember this fact. The Holy Quran says, it is he who gives life and death. And when he decides upon an affair, he says to it be, and it is. Thank you for joining us this week. Please join us next week for Islam.